What's up guys? Welcome back to my series where we focus on the best fighters in the world. I give you five tips that make each fighter so successful with training tips so you can become a little bit more like them. And today we are focusing on one FC former Muay Thai champion, Jonathan Haggerty. This athlete has been requested so many times on the channel. People want me to make a video about what makes this guy so good. I gotta say he is a sharp fighter. He just had a fight the other day, not in 1FC, back in his home country, I think England, and man, he's just looking good. So today we're gonna break down Jonathan Haggerty. Throughout my years of training, I can think of two guys, not myself, two guys in particular that I trained with who just had picture perfect technique. It's like you can watch them, have a camera ready and go snap, 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 snap as they're throwing techniques. And then you can just use those pictures to teach other people exactly how punches and kicks should be executed. Well, Jonathan Haggerty to me is one of those guys who's very similar. He just has beautiful technique, his offense, his defense, just everything looking so sharp. I'm very excited to break down this fighter. And before we get the video underway, guys, if you are liking this series, loving this series, please give the video a like. It helps the channel so much. And let's move on to point number one, where I want to talk about Jonathan Haggerty's lead leg body front kick. The way he executes this is so spectacular. And whereas most times when I see a lot of people throw the lead leg front kick, it's just more of a technique to jam people. You know, somebody's coming in towards you and you stop them, or it's just something to create distance. But when Jonathan throws it, it looks like it actually does damage. He can create so much power behind this lead leg technique. It kind of reminds me, not the exact same, but the damage that Bokao could do with that lead leg front kick, while well, it's something that Haggerty has in common with Bokao. Now, why is he so good at this kick? Well, when we look at his technique, a lot of times when people are standing, they're gonna have one hip slightly in front, if not square, depending on their positioning. But let's say square. We're gonna go with square for the moment, which means that both my hips are pointing out to the side. Now, when we see Haggerty throw this, when he finishes his technique, he doesn't just have his hips still square, he stretches through. But something else that he does, which is very interesting, is it's almost like a front kick stomp. It's almost like he's stomping that kick out. And how does he accomplish that? Well, instead of lifting his knee up to hip level, very often he lifts beyond that. He lifts a little bit higher, which means if I extended, I could very well go up to head level, or I can push through and create loads of power with that extra height, which I initiated. So something you guys can really, really try and do when you're throwing that lead leg front kick is don't be too almost lazy with it. Don't just lift up to here and think, ah, oh, I'm gonna just sort of snap up and out. Aim for up and then push this hip forward as far as you can. Actually execute a snap out with your hip. And then at the same time, that elevated leg can push through just got a good pop there, not warmed up. That's what you get for throwing a kick without loosening up at my age, 36, not that old, but still. Anyway, what we wanna make sure we're doing is executing those two things to kick a little bit more like Haggerty. We make sure we pump up and we push the hip out. Those two things are something that right away when I watched him kick, I went, that's unique and that's unique compared to most people out there who are throwing lead leg front kicks. You can also just get on a bag and practice just very simple simply pushing and pushing and just getting that alternating going, but don't think just here straight out, think up high and drive through on both legs. I've seen some very high level fighters throughout the years who are fantastic at pumping that knee up and driving through. If you're an old school K1 Max fan, you probably remember the name Kohiri Maki. He had amazing front kicks to the body as well, although his came off the back leg as opposed to Haggerty who comes off the front leg. But both of them execute that knee very high and then kind of stomp through. Point number two, and we already slightly touched on it because I was mentioning how crisp Haggerty's technique is. But something that I really want to focus on, I really want you to get a thought process happening when you're training, is guys like him, they don't just stumble on this amazing technique out of luck. Chances are that they take every shot they throw when they're learning and when they get more advanced and they're trying for picture perfect technique every time, trying to keep everything as crisp and precise and on point as possible. Now you might be asking, why is this a reason that he's so good? When you have crisp technique, 
you're able to generate maximum power from using your body. You're able to throw shots and not leave openings. You're able to keep your techniques as hidden as possible until the last moment. For example, if I'm throwing my cross and every time I throw my cross, I elevate my elbow and then I throw, that's a little tell that the shot is coming. But if I'm picture perfect and I throw and I keep everything tight, 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 it's gonna be much harder for my opponent to see it coming. So Haggerty, yes, he's very beautiful to watch because his technique is so on point, but it makes him that much more dangerous. This is just a matter of you being super dedicated, looking at each technique, not as like a brute force kind of thing, but an actual beautiful technique to let loose. That's the difference sometimes between casual fans who just watch and go, oh, you know, punch is a punch, kick is a kick, and people who really love it, who look at the aesthetics of every motion. He looks like he's one of these guys, and if you guys want to be like that, just get in front of the mirror, watch somebody like Haggerty, try to copy his technique and go, okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Every shot I throw is gonna be as precise and perfect as possible. Textbook punches and kicks, elbows and knees. Now, when we look at somebody like Haggerty, we could be listing off so many things he's spectacular at, but I really look and I go, what to me makes him unique? And the next point is something that we don't see in too many people. And it is basically him just being a full package of every element of the fight sport. He's a Muay Thai fighter, so obviously his kicks are on point. Very, very nice body round kicks, nice front kicks, which we already talked about. He also has nice knees, which moves into the clench. His clench, his throws are spectacular. He also has mean elbows, especially his spinning elbow when he comes around, that's very scary. But then to round out the rest of the package, offensively at least, he also has crisp boxing. And that's something that ends up lacking a lot of times. If somebody has good kicks, good clench, good elbows, their boxing is not spectacular. It looks to me like he covers all the offensive traits which are necessary to be one of the best fighters in the world. Now, I know that doesn't help you guys too much in the sense of, oh, okay, well, I wanna learn how to be more like Haggerty, but it should remind us that we shouldn't take anything for granted when we are doing our training. Don't be somebody who's just gonna go, oh, I'm gonna work a left round kick and that's all I need. Or I'm gonna work a lot, a lot of clench, but I'm gonna forget about my boxing. Or I'm gonna go ahead and go for knockout shots and forget about my kicks. You wanna make sure that you're doing every element of the fight sport so that if you ever end up against somebody who can outkick you, well, you can go and box them. If you end up with somebody who's really good at boxing, you can fall in and clench them. If you end up with somebody who's good at clenching, you guys get the idea. I'm always able to adapt and move to different spots it makes me a very dangerous fighter. Something that I have done my whole career, I started off with really, really good kicks. Like kicks were my go-to. I didn't even want to throw hands. I didn't want to box. But then bit by bit, I went, you know what? I have to get into the gym. I have to put in the boxing rounds. I have to make my hands better than my legs. And now they probably are. Now, because I don't compete in Muay Thai, I don't have the elbows that Haggerty has. My clench used to be really good, but I haven't worked it that much in the last decade because Glory and Bellator, under the kickboxing rules, removed most of the clench but I still tried to generally do the same thing that Jonathan Haggerty is doing and making sure that I'm getting the full package and I don't have any big gaping holes in my fight offense. Next up, I wanna talk about the lead body hook, which Haggerty throws, and he actually threw it in his last fight, the one that just happened this last weekend, and he hurt the guy enough to actually score a knockdown off it. And it's just that simple step in and let the body shot go. Step in, let the body shot go. Most people do not lead with a lead arm body hook because it requires you to drop your hand and to leave your head exposed. But if you are confident and you have lots of power in that lead arm body hook, you know that even if the cross comes, landing the body shot is probably better. It's better to give the body shot and take the punch to the head because this can be super damaging, but you have to have that confidence. And it wasn't just a one-time thing for him where he just threw it and it was fluke. I've seen multiple times in his fights when I started watching where he leads with that lead arm body hook. We have to make sure that when we step in, our head just moves a tiny bit off the center line or if you're not moving your head off the center line and you're stepping straight in, you recognize that your opponent is not in the position to counter. Maybe he's just somebody who likes keeping his hands way up here. Or maybe you did a little fake. Or maybe as you step in, you decide, okay, I'm gonna step in, but if I see him move, I'm gonna adjust. But if he doesn't adjust, I'm just gonna rip that body shot in. The lead arm body hook is something I've talked about on this channel before, specifically because Canelo is so good at it. And I wanted to point it out to everybody else because it is one of the techniques that I like throwing as well. 
well. To develop confidence in this shot, you just need to set yourself up in front of a bag and just practice out of range, you know, just outside of jab range, take a little step forward. I just do a little bit of movement forward and just go, bam, out of range, bam. I basically try and time the body shot when my foot lands. I don't want to step and then hook, but I definitely don't want to throw the hook and then step. Just put the two together. We'll move in, bam, bam. And I'm just trying to get that body shot down. If you have somebody who keeps their hands very high and that body's open, a lot of times by the time you attack the head, they've made the adjustment in protecting the body. But if you step straight in and they're worried about head shots coming first, because that's usually what people lead with, you can often find that body shot before they have a chance to drop their elbow. And guys, the final point for today about Jonathan Haggerty, like I said, there could be so many more because this guy is just spectacular. But the final point for today is gonna be the lead leg high kick, which he throws, but he doesn't just use it offensively. He uses it as a counter defensively. So specifically in the video clip I wanna show you, he jumps in, he bangs a few shots, the guy counters back, he fades back and snaps up. And this was against Rod Tang. And if this was not Rod Tang, if this was somebody else, I bet that round kick up to the head would have put them down, maybe finished the fight. Using a head kick, as a counter shot to a punch is something not a lot of people do because there's an understanding of distance, a whole lot of balance required, but when you can execute it, when you can actually surprise people at that range with a head kick, you're gonna be super successful, super dangerous with it. So how do we do this? Well, the first thing that we can do is we can learn to keep our back foot planted to the ground. We simply shift our weight back, we elevate the leg, and then from there, we execute the round kick. It's just a fade back round kick. That's all we're doing. So if the guy's hitting me in the head right now and I go, okay, he might throw another shot or he's done, I just shift backwards. Now I'm out of range of his punches and then I snap up. Maybe he even walks in with a lazy punch. If the guy steps forward, huh, tries to throw a punch or tries to punch up this arm and leaves the other hand down low, it's the perfect time to block the first shot, fade back on the second shot, and then make him eat a foot right in the side of the head. You do need a decent amount of flexibility for this particular kick coming off the lead leg. You have to be able to lift that knee up super high. So if this is something that you wanna work on, make sure you start implementing a decent amount of stretching, open those hips up, loosen up that groin muscle. And then remember, it's just simple fade back, snap up. Fade back, snap up. I've executed this one before. Unfortunately, in my fights, I very often don't follow through enough. I just sort of flick it up and I don't think follow through for that power and score the knockdown. I have had to pull the shot a number of times in sparring because I know I could put somebody down, but in the fights, for some reason, it just hasn't clicked properly for me. Hopefully in the future, you guys will see me land this round kick to the head and score a knockdown off it. So guys, that is everything we're talking today about Jonathan Haggerty. I really look forward to seeing this guy get back into 1FC. 1FC right now, it's just unfortunate. They're not putting on enough events. They're not able to give all their fighters enough fights. So guys like Haggerty, are finding other promotions for the moment just to fill in so he's not staying inactive for too long. But yes, I'm very much looking forward to seeing him back in the 1FC ring. I think a rematch against Rod Tang would be spectacular because Rod Tang always puts on a super exciting fight, but Jonathan Haggerty does have the skill set to defeat him. I actually do believe that. And actually, I guess it would be a second rematch because they already had a rematch, I believe, where Haggerty got hit with a body shot or something like that. But still, I give this guy all the credit in the world. I can understand why so many people out there wanted me to make this video and why he has so many fans. So we'll leave it there for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you haven't already, join the channel and get subscribed. Be sure to throw down below which fighter you want me to cover next in this series. And as always guys, train hard. I'll see you back here soon for another video.